and this is how we're going to change it. But in this case, this was an example. Can we really talk about proprietary for developed stuff that I worked for them? So I can't really, you know, tell you anything we're actually working on. But here's something that Crimson Hexagon did on Obama's speech last fall to help here. And having created some of these monitors myself now, I can kind of see both the pluses and the minuses of doing this this way. I mean, they, it was really great. They took like 95,000 tweets and processed them overnight, and they came up with this, that 26% thought it was a great speech. But guess what? 9% uh, said that he lied. And you know, I gotta read that was kind of interesting that, and then someone else said it's not progressive enough, and then the other one said something like, uh, well, other positive, and, you know. So you can see the detail, devil's in the detail. So the opinion monitor was able to create what none of these other tools today can do, which is not yet, <coughs> which is categorize. But then I'll tell you how it does it so that you can understand what's involved and why skills are and this is another thing, people generally don't see this about the, the, the Crimson Hexagon, it's the, called the summarizer. And when you put in a query and you're working with the opinion monitor, it'll create this, but I've never seen anyone actually do this, although I don't think the technology is really beyond anybody to do here, is it, it takes the first couple hundred documents and it creates a topic map, but it's not this stupid cloud thing that Radian or some of the others do that's just a single word that doesn't mean anything. It actually does long, like a multi-phrase thing. Like it says, and this chunk is about the White House, and some of them are saying health care and house poor, and these are about Obama and his report, Stu Pack, which is you know, one of the people, and these are about small businesses, and this is about just health care. So, that's not the total sum of documents it picks out. This is just <coughs> the unit, a couple, first couple hundred. So this gives an idea to the analyst who generates this that this that they're on track or they're not on track with the analysis. Like, is my query good enough, really, or do I not need to change it? Typically, what happens to create this? What the analyst generally does is, if we have a question like, what's the sentiment around? Uh, Wrigley Spearman gum, you know, like say somebody wants to know that and they're doing a pitch or something, you could, you know, you have to figure out, well, what's the query? You know, like, I mean, what's the real question? And that doesn't even, the stakeholder half the time doesn't even know what the question is. I mean, so, so what's the, what's the answer? You know, okay. But the analyst has to figure out what these categories are. So actually this was a human being that created this, this thing. Somebody started out with the idea that they looked at maybe a version of this and they looked at some ideas and then made the comments and they said, you know what, I think a bunch of people are saying it's a great speech. So now I'm gonna train the categorizer to learn that these 20 documents that come across mean this. And then they have to do that with all of So they need about three or 400 of those. So an analyst has to sit, has to create the categories and then it has to categorize the machine learning, and then this thing will go off and try to attempt to do the rest. And you can let it run. Um, and that technology is interesting. It, it's certainly an advance over what we have today, you know, for most of the other platforms, but there's pitfalls to it, number one being the analyst. Without a trained analyst who understands the industry and the question, this is not gonna be any good. And then the documents themselves are sometimes problematic, which is pulling up maybe porn, you know, and they have to go look and see, well, wait a second, this query's not working quite well for me, I've got to change it. And then the last thing is that the inherent problem of this approach is that when you create these categories and categorize the machine learning, you'll find that you have plenty of one and not that much of another. So you might have a problem where you're, you're training and you're sitting there for half a day <coughs> and you've gone through a couple hundred documents and you've got plenty of uh, uh, great speech and you hardly have anything of uh, not progressive enough, but you created a category. You can either move those documents off to another category, but I don't recommend that because after a while then you become very two-dimensional. You're not really thinking about anything. So generally what I do in a situation like that is when I've gotten enough of the ones that I can get, I change the query around just to focus on, you know, that thing that I need to get more documents until I can get enough to run a 
And these things need like a certain amount of documents to run. So you have to have you have to have trained every category you create. And then you let it run. And now we have ordered to use this in our pictures so we can run them ourselves. But before it was a boot key service. So Putin has so to me that seemed like this is where the rest of the vendors need to go. And and machine learning works well, but there again is the analysis. It all comes down to the person that runs. This is nothing without the right person running it and the right question. So at the end of the day, this could be a good thing, but I think it could be used differently than the way we use it. It could be used, I get questions, for example, about we are met monitoring different campaigns for different competitors, and we want to know how many sports endorsements or how many celebrity endorsements or how many something. And in a way, this could actually, if you had an intern do it, and you looked at a whole over years of time, it would take someone a week to go through all of that stuff, through all the brands, and say, yeah, well, this is an example of a guy with a auto racer driving down, you know, with Castro oil. And this is an example of when it was a birthday celebration or something. So basically, what these things could be trained to do is to auto-categorize that. We've never tried it before, but I think it, that would be a use of Take marketing campaigns where there's a number of different categories. So in this case, you know what the categories are. And then you train the algorithm to successfully do it. The, the quality of that could be good depending on who trains it and, how, and whether this thing can really do it. But I think these kinds of tools can solve some of the sentiment issues. But they are, in this case, there's a patented algorithm that these guys have. And you know, so this particular way they do it, I mean, you have to buy a pen to, to do it, but I mean, you, you welcome other people. I've seen other people do things like that at the Huffington Post, adaptive semantics does something on the back end which reads all the Huffington Post comments and can determine who is flaming. They have an ability to do this. I was invited to the Huffington Post, I saw it myself. I saw how they could do influencer identification by looking at Topic analysis through hundreds of thousands of posts a day at the Huffington Post, and how they were beginning to believe the, the need for newspapers and online periodicals to have reviewers. They could offload some of that work because they could train the algorithm to a, say, 90% certainty that this was an abusive comment. So, Adapter Semantics, a company in New York, I can tell you about them as well. They're co owners. She was one of my co-chairs when I was on board. So I follow a lot what these people do. And these are the most exciting things I've seen in sentiment analysis because this is really kind of almost what you need to do. But again, behind it is a human being or human beings. And to some extent, you have to dumb yourself down and train them. But this is where you can go. Um, the other thing I was asked to do is to ex come up with the idea of why does this or doesn't this work? Or why does any of the sentiment? And some of these examples came up earlier today. But you know, examples of sentiment analysis gone wrong is uh, my experience is that, and I think uh, Philip had said that, and so had Nathan, that the, the sentiment analysis people are connecting what, in the most cases, what, what the sentence is and what the topic of your analysis is. So like, one example is I monitor, when I came to Florida last year, I kind of created monitor just people talking in the media because sometimes I find out 